Hey, this is George Duke, and you're watching Best of Atlanta Content. <laughs> sitting here with the legendary George Duke. How are you, George? I'm great, man. Great. Now, something that, uh, that when I think about you and I think about your whole career, I've got every album you've ever done, and the sense of humor. <laughs> and you say you learned that from Frank Zappa. Yeah. Uh, what exactly did you learn from Frank Zappa, the sense of humor? Of A lot of crazy things. And I learned from Cannibal Adderley, too, because I was kind of working with them both at the same time. Well, Frank C. was very open as a person. He actually sat me down and said, you know, first of all, you're too stiff. <laughs> he said, you need to open up, open up your, your, your whole mind to other forms of music, other styles of music. And also, you know, you're, you, you're funny off stage, you're telling jokes. And stuff. Add some of this to, to your music, it'll make it more accessible. And so he would talk to me like that. You need to invest in yourself. You need to do this. You should play synthesizer. You should sing. He kept pushing me to do other things outside of what I wanted to do. And it was just as simple as that. He just... He just, just like I'm talking to you right now. George, you need to play synthesizer. I do? Really? Yes. And I said, I don't really want to learn all these. He said, I'm going to buy one, put it on your Fender Rose, and maybe you'll bump it and the sound comes out. That's the way that happened. Serious. Right. And what is, I, when, how would you describe having a sense of humor in your music? Well, you see, just because something's funny doesn't mean it's not valuable to me. You know, a lot of people think music has to be very serious. And, of course, I used to be, uh, uh, before I joined Frank, I was a real straight leg jazz player. I didn't look at the audience. I didn't talk to the audience. I just sat down and played. And, that, and that's okay. But he encouraged me to do other things. In terms of the sense of humor, if you were going to play with Frank, you had to have a sense of humor. So I learned to develop that to allow it to, to, to flourish. I I have some of the back. Because it, it wasn't that way. It, it's not that I didn't have it. I just didn't allow it to come out. Now, man, you know, I kind of loosen up. And, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. And I think that uh, you can be uh, lighthearted about something and still be serious about the music, that's, even though it's lighthearted. So just because it's funny doesn't mean it ain't heavy. Right. It's just not heavy. <laughs> As far as the evolution of your career, yeah. going back, uh, you know, the different phases you've been through, mm -hmm. one thing I, I really appreciate about you, and you're one of the only artists I can say this about over the last 40 years, you've stayed current, you've stayed contemporary, you've stayed cutting edge, and yet you've also maintained your own style. How, yeah. uh, how have you done that? And when all the other artists have come and gone, what is it that, uh, that you latched on to? Well, you know, I took the, uh, the lessons from Frank, I took the lessons from Cannibal Adderley, Miles Davis. Those people were my heroes, and they didn't really care what style. And so I said, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And I just took the hit from, from fans that wanted me to stay in one particular stylistic area. Uh, the, the, the hit from... Uh, what do you call it? Pro uh, not, not promoters, but but guy, you know, uh, pr what's the word I'm looking for? The, the you know uh, uh, critics, critics who would write say, well, he used to be a good piano player. Yeah. You know, serious. They used to say he used to be a good piano player. Just because I left the the straight ahead jazz world, I never left it. I just sort of went sideways and went to a different style of music and incorporated all I learned from straight ahead jazz into that style. Style is irrelevant. It should have nothing to do with what an artist creates. However it remain relevant, it takes fortitude. I just didn't care. I said, this is who I am. Allow that to happen. And that happened because of Miles Davis talking to me. Hey, man, yeah, I want you to do something like this. Don't worry about that. Just do this. And I said, oh, okay. You know, and he would challenge you. He, it's not like he would tell you what to do, but he challenged you in other ways. So right. that, that really, really helped me. Without them, I don't know. Right. 
Now, how do you define jazz and what you do? Because I know critics have said a lot of things about you. I have fought with critics over you because I think no you're one of the greatest. Oh, Lord. And have kept it. You were one of the first jazz artists I ever bought the record. And, of course, it was more funk. Yeah. But, uh, but I considered it jazz. So what do you, what, how do you define jazz? Well, every, everyone has a different definition. But for me, for me as, uh, as an artist, I, I take the Duke Ellington word, beyond category. As far as the jazz is concerned, I think it needs two elements. Um, I, and to, to lose either one, I think it ceases to be jazz. First of all, it has to be spontaneous. I think for, for me, what makes jazz live is the fact that it's spontaneous creation. I think it needs, just like what happened in New Orleans and, and, and areas down south when the European element of chords and melody met the African rhythms, that's what made jazz what it, what it is, what it was, and continues to be. And with either one of those pulls from it, it kind of ceases to be jazz for me. That and the spontaneous element is what makes it work. If you, if, if you can play jazz like classical music where everything is written out and it can still swing, but to make it live, and, and continue, it needs to incorporate the things that are going on during the day. And that's why jazz has evolved over the years. How uh, Miles Davis has changed the, the face of jazz at least half a dozen times. Right, and how would you put that in perspective today? How are you changing jazz today? Because I think you Me? are still changing jazz today with every album you do. How, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know if I'm changing. That, that's for other people to say. I just do what I feel led to do. I, I think uh, I, I can't blame anyone but myself for what I do. Um, and I try to keep it real, you know. Uh, I try to keep it relevant lyrically to what's going on, keep it positive. I, I think there's enough negativity in music. I don't need to write anything negative. So I try to keep the energy moving forward, moving positive, uh, give people something to think about, play music that is uh, necessary, you know, something that they may want to hear. But somewhere along the line, whether it's in an album or whether it's on a show, I'm going to give them something they may not expect. <laughs> or something that's going to challenge them, you know, and I think that's as important because I don't want to play down to my own. Four audiences right now, is it, a, is it a smooth audience, a funk audience, a jazz audience? How, how would you define that? Well, probably all of that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, because as, as being as eclectic as I am, there's different styles. People generally like different sides of what I do. But I, in a show, I give them all of them. Yeah, you know, everything, from, you know, whatever I can do within the time is a lot of it. And I think that's why you do one of the best shows. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for years, and, and I think it's fabulous what you do, and it's an honor to talk to you. And uh, I'm Scott Fugate with BOAC TV, and thank you for tuning in. And he's a man. I'm going to take you to the bridge, Mike.